two videos. Yay! Two videos in one month. Has anyone done that before? Um, I don't, I don't think so. List one YouTuber right now that has uploaded twice in one month and I'll give you a thousand dollars. Today's video is going to be a little bit different from what you're used to on the channel. I've kind of steered away from exposing things and I just make what I wanna make usually. You know, stranger danger videos, my dare video. By the way, this is actually merch and it will come in handy today because the things you're gonna see are gonna make you wanna say stop a bunch of times. Why are my arms shaking? So anyways, you know, stranger danger videos, dare videos, um, sex education, bad movies, all stuff that I've been super interested in talking about. But today is very different. The more I looked into this topic, the more sure I was that I needed to make a video on it, just because it weirds me out to my core. I don't know what I'm gonna title this video yet, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with like YouTube kids and Hulu, but this story is much more than that. So strap in and get ready to hear about the horrible world of online children's entertainment. Before we talk about what kickstarted uh, me wanting to make this video, I do need to stress two things. One, everybody knows how bad YouTube Kids is. That's not what this video is about. You've seen me rant about it before. You've seen other YouTubers rant about it before. And two, I just need to stress before I talk shit about what this generation of kids are gonna look at. I have to acknowledge that the last few generations have had really targeted advertising to us. Oh, what's that, mom? Turtles and pizza and weapons? Can we give that company a million dollars? Dad, look at me in the eyes. Yep, the car turns into a robot. And also, um, the kid from Even Stevens is in it. So that's fucking crazy, right? I think it really kickstarted in the 70s with things like Star Wars where toys and marketing were targeted at kids pretty aggressively on TV. But the internet has changed it into a monster that I don't think anyone could have expected. And that's what today's video is about. Profiting off children. Isn't that fun? Isn't that a fun topic to talk about? Don't you just feel good thinking about that? All right, now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about Hulu. So a few nights ago, I finished re-watching season two of Atlanta. So I just started scrolling through Hulu Kids to see what they had on there. They had things, you know, like regular show and adventure time, which were kind of, you know, slightly past my time as a kid. I would still watch them, but I was like becoming a teenager. And those are great shows. People that are a few years younger than me got excellent television. But current kids today, like young kids, have the worst entertainment of any generation ever. And that became more apparent to me when I saw that Ryan's Toy Reviews, the YouTube Kids Unboxing Toy Channel, had a Hulu show. And not only that, it was called Ryan's World Specials, presented by Pocket Watch. So already my anti-advertising to kids brain thinks, the name of the show is sponsored even? You don't wanna see SpongeBob SquarePants presented by AutoZone, Zaboomafoo presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. And especially because Ryan's Toy Reviews is centered at very, very young children. We're talking toddlers to like eight years old. Now, if you don't know the channel Ryan's Toy Reviews, I'm gonna go and give you a little voiceover backstory really quick. Uh, welcome back to Eddie's Backstory Corner. So Ryan Toys Review, otherwise known as Ryan's World, is a YouTube channel that was started on March 16th of 2015. It stars an eight-year-old boy and has over 22.2 million subscribers, with over 33 billion YouTube views. Without fail, Ryan's channel uploads a video pretty much every single day. And you're probably thinking, what would compel a set of parents to make their kid work basically a full-time job on the internet? The answer is money. When Ryan was six years old, between 2016 and 2017. He was the eighth highest paid YouTuber, making $11 million. Last year, he was listed as the highest paid YouTuber, making over $22 million. That's more than the Paul brothers, that's more than PewDiePie, that's more than pretty much 
I, I don't know, all the money in the world, I guess. But about two months ago, Ryan faced some controversy. And when I say Ryan faced, I mean his parents. He's an eight-year-old boy. He's not responsible for any of this. At the end of August, the FTC filed a complaint against YouTube because of Ryan's channel. The FTC said that the channel deceptively promotes a multitude of products to millions of preschool-aged children in violation of FTC law. To sum up the complaint, basically what they're saying is that over 90% of the content on Ryan's channel is sponsored but it's not clear enough for a four-year-old to discern if it's an ad. If you put sponsored by McDonald's in the corner of a video screen, a four-year-old boy is not going to be like, oh, I understand that Ryan is getting paid to give these views and that his actual views may differ from this. Because, you know, I understand endorsement and he is endorsing this product, so it might not be his normal views. No, instead of that, they're going to eat Play-Doh and shit their pants because they're a four-year-old kid. So for now, that's all the backstory that you need about Ryan's channel. So now that you're an expert in an eight-year-old's multi-million dollar YouTube channel, let's check out his Hulu show. Okay, watch presents. Oh, hey Combo Crew! I didn't see you there! Most of you guys know how much I love Ryan videos. So immediately we're greeted by this extremely poorly animated panda. And I know if you don't like care about animation at all, it looks fine, but it's super lazy. I mean, look at this backdrop. And already, don't you think it's a little unsettling to have a cartoon tell you that they love an eight year old boy's videos, especially when it's voiced by a grown man. Just like, hey guys, you know I love this little boy. Don't clip that, for the love of God. Behold! Combo Super Awesome Amazing Crazy Cool Red Titan Comic Book Collection! In this show, they have an animated version of Ryan where he's a superhero called Red Titan. Now I know you're thinking, it's like, that's kind of cool for an eight-year-old boy to see himself as a superhero, but when you really think about it, it's kind of weird that they're like creating this image of Ryan that is completely out of his control as a child, right? It's a little bizarre that he's not only a multi-million dollar YouTube channel where he unboxes toys, but now they're taking his image and just some random adults are animating it. There's nothing too blatantly like illegal or wrong about it, but it just feels weird, right? Now don't worry, his show isn't the worst part about this entire video, it's gonna get worse. But I still wanna show you a little bit more just how low effort this show is. When you watch the episode, you realize, wait, isn't this exactly like those shitty animations that were on YouTube kids videos that everybody had a problem with? There's nothing blatantly gross or weird about these, but they're so low effort, there's not even really like a narrative and there's not even voiceovers for most of it. It's just like, oh, here's this character and here's this character and they're playing whack-a-mole. Watch them play whack-a-mole for a second. What is this? For generations upon generations, Kids TV has been dedicated to at least entertaining them, but for the most part, educating them. Sesame Street takes the opportunity to entertain kids with these lovable characters and also teach them the alphabet, teach them how to do math, teach them grammar and spelling, which is also kind of the alphabet. But this is just flashy garbage to distract your kid on an iPad when you're going on a road trip and you don't want to hear them talk anymore. I'm not a parent. I don't know what it's like to have an annoying ass child just screaming in your backseat, but there's gotta be a better way than this. There's so much Ryan content that this kid works a full-time job. Like I said, that was gonna be the main part of this video until I started digging in to Pocket Watch, the company that presents Ryan's show and showed itself at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> So immediately when I went to Pocket Watch's Wikipedia, and I know some people are like, well, Wikipedia is not really a source. Like, I know your teacher said that, but you can look at the sources right here. It's not my main source for the video. It was just the first thing I looked up. But it says Pocket Watch Inc., stylized as Pocket.Watch, is a digital media studio that specializes in extending popular kids and family YouTube stars and characters into global franchises. Gross! That's super gross. 
Why would you say that? They're not actively bragging about turning children into global franchises, right? That would be fucking insane. So I went to Pocket Watch's website, and it says on the website right away, Pocket Watch is the new studio creating global franchises from the YouTube stars and characters loved by Generation Alpha. Those are their words. They are bragging about turning an eight-year-old boy into a global franchise. Am I going fucking crazy? Like, we already live in a society. By the way, we live in a society. We already acknowledge that we fuck up child stars by making them big and famous. But this is a whole different animal. Because when you're filming YouTube videos, there are no current child labor laws that are enforced on YouTube channels. And I was shocked to find out that Ryan's Hulu show is mainly just repackaged YouTube videos that they animated over as well, which means it's a TV show that was made with an eight-year-old boy as the star without active SAG or child labor laws. Um, that sounds illegal! Also looking at Pocket Watch's website, the first thing that you see is a Ryan Mobile Mario Kart clone? He's a real boy! He's not like even a character in a movie that they're branding. They're branding this kid who has no idea what's going on. Who are his parents? Who are they? So on the Pocket Watch website, you can scroll down to a button for press, and they say, see what they're saying. As in, see what the press is saying about our company. And um, the first article they listed, the headline is just a sentence that makes you want to scream. The headline is, Ryan's Toys Review is this generation's Mickey Mouse. Ah! No! Please no! Oh my god! Mickey Mouse is a globally recognized trademark worth billions of dollars. And um, the fun thing is, he's a fictional cartoon character. You cannot treat an eight-year-old boy like Mickey Mouse, dude. So I looked in more to Pocket Watch, and the surprises, they just kept coming. First thing I want to mention about Pocket Watch is the CEO used to work at Maker Studios. Now, if you guys don't remember Maker Studios, it was an MCN that was originally started by YouTubers and then was bought out by Disney for, I believe, like $500 million. And actually, some personal history, back in 2014, before my channel took off, I was locked in a Maker Studios contract and it wasn't good for me. But then as a business, Maker just started canceling contracts, fucking over creators, and then shut down. When I looked into who was funding Pocket Watch, there was kind of a, I don't know, a standout name in there that I did not expect to find in a children's YouTube media company. So reading off the list, there's this guy um, who's an Academy Award winning producer of Avatar and Titanic. And you're like, oh, that's pretty legit entertainment, you know, going into it. But the main one that uh, really caught my eye is Downey Ventures, which is Robert Downey Jr.'s investment company. Iron Man is funding YouTube kids. Tony Stark himself is funding Ryan's toy reviews. Think about that for a moment, let it set in. The main Avenger is paying for the, like, exploitation of this eight-year-old boy becoming a business. I don't remember that from Iron Man! So reading into a Variety article about them getting funding, there was a quote, There is no other funding team or company better positioned to transform the kids' digital entertainment space than Pocket Watch. Said Alan, uh, I don't know, a digital media investor and co-founder of Machinima. Also, somebody on their advisory board worked at Defy Media. So we have three past company employers. Machinima, a company that made a bunch of money, then fucked over creators and closed down. Maker Studios, a company that made a bunch of money, fucked over creators and closed down. And Defy Media, I bet you can fucking guess, fucked over creators, made a bunch of money, and then closed down. So we should totally trust this company with children and their professional franchises. This sounds fun. <laughs>
the creator of Danny Phantom and Fairly Odd Parents, and some other shows that uh, pe people didn't watch uh, compared to those two. And he had this weird Kickstarter where he was complaining about how family TV is trash these days and we need more Christian values and, you know, we should give him a bunch of money so he can make a streaming service called Oaxis. So you'd think, you know, Butch really cares about what uh, children are seeing. He wouldn't just work with a shitty, immoral children's company just to make a quick buck, would he? Pocket Watch has one more Hulu show called Hobby Kids TV, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But the main thing I wanted to show you is Butch Hartman actually makes an animated show for Hobby Kids TV, the family toy YouTube channel. So I clicked on it, and um, we're just gonna watch it together. This is a paid advertisement for Carl's Jr. Kids, how many times do I have to tell you? No turning everything we own into burgers. Hobby <laughs> kids! Super hobby dudes. Awesome attitudes. Hobby mom, hobby dad. Hobby kids not really bad. Okay, so I want to stress right away, they did have the mom say it was a paid ad by Carl's Jr. And there was a little subtitle thing there for about 12 seconds. But the FTC lawsuit I showed earlier is proof that kids that are younger can't really decipher what an ad fully is. So yeah, the mom did say it was a paid advertisement and it does say it there for a second, but then we go into a fully animated show and they don't stress that it's sponsored later. And that becomes a problem. <laughs> That's your stomach, Hobby Bear? What? Breakfast was ages ago. An early lunch isn't such a bad idea. Hobby Kids, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Ha! Ha! Carl's Jr. For real, we're we're taking kids content and having your kids' favorite animated characters just go, Carl's Jr. This is such blatant, scummy advertising to children. If you are making little animated characters for a 30 second spot on a kid's show, and those animated characters say, let's go to Carl's Jr. At least it's a Carl's Jr. ad. But not every episode of this show is an ad for Carl's Jr. There are other animated episodes. Whoa, the line for Carl's Jr. is long today. I'm gonna order a cheeseburger, fries, and a yummy milk. No one makes char-broiled burgers as good as Carl's Jr. And everyone knows Carl's Jr. makes the best burgers in the universe. It's so just gross. It's gross advertising. And shame on you, Butch Hartman. Danny Phantom was fucking great, dude. What happened to you? And I think, you know, before we move on, this is what's really bothering me about it. The YouTube kid stuff already seemed super scummy, but it was always just parents kind of manipulating their kids to make a ton of money, which wasn't cool, and we all made videos on it, but at least it was contained to that. What Pocket Watch is suggesting is that traditional media is now adopting this really kind of, in a way, like abusive, to children way of modeling things. These kids are working full-time jobs as entertainers and they have no say in it. It's already bad with child actors, but at least we have an established industry to make sure it's cool for them. I don't know if there's anybody looking out for these kids. I don't know if it's just this pocket watch company going to the parents, we're gonna make you millions of dollars. And the parents are like, okay, take my kid for as long as you need. Or in fact, we'll shoot at our house and just send you the footage. Because this isn't just like Hulu making a show out of it. This is a company funded by the biggest actor in the world, in the biggest franchise. Hulu is a giant streaming service with multi-million dollar networks behind them. And Butch Hartman is a classic TV show producer. He created two beloved shows that were ran on regular television. Pocket Watch signed a deal with Paramount Pictures to make an unboxing movie for kids. This is a real industry problem now. I just, I don't know, I'm worried that people aren't gonna be as angry about this as I am, so I just really like picture how much you enjoyed playing with toys as a kid. I liked it for way too long. Like a lot of people I've talked to, I would stow a bunch of toys under my blanket in my bed, and at night, I would just play with my toys and run through different stories and use my imagination for years. Like a little too long, I did it until I was like, 
10 or 11 because I loved it so much. These four, and there are many more children on YouTube having this, are getting completely robbed of a normal childhood. They are not asking to be famous. I know I read an article where Ryan Toys Review's mom said that he loved YouTube videos and he asked like, why don't I have a YouTube channel? And that's well and good when you're making videos with your kid, but when he becomes the highest earner on YouTube, you need to rethink whether you can just use the excuse, oh, it's Ryan's passion. Because Ryan has a Nick Jr. TV show and he has a Hulu show now and he has a line in Target and a line of toys in Walmart and a video game coming out. Do you think he pictured like, oh, I wanna make $22 million next year? He probably just wanted to make a few videos with his parents. I'm almost sure that Robert Downey Jr. cares about kids, but I don't think he knows the extent of what this investment is. I don't know if Butch Hartman thinks it's as manipulative as it is. He might just see it as a side gig. But all these traditional media people put all their efforts in and the kids are the ones that are harmed out of it. So, uh, uh, thank you for watching the video, and here's a word from our sponsor. Hey guys, um, sorry, I wanted to see how tall my tripod would get, and it got stuck, so. Uh, I gotta do the ad from here. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring today's video. Everyone say thank you, Audible. Let me ask you something. Did you know that Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks out of anybody ever? Including Audible Originals? And I know what your dumb baby brain is thinking. Eddie, what's an Audible Original? I have no idea and I can't critically think at all. Put it together, they're original audiobooks, documentaries, and scripted shows made by Audible, obviously. You can listen to these audiobooks on any device, including mobile and Alexa. Hey Google. Can you play Audible audiobooks? Voice actions aren't available for that app. You're an idiot. You're a stupid idiot, Google. As an Audible member, every month you get to choose one free audiobook, regardless of the price, and two Audible originals. Oh, what's that? You want a 30-day free trial? You want to start a free trial for Audible because it sounds good from what I'm saying? Then go to audible.com slash eddy, E-D-D-Y, spell my name with a Y, stop getting it wrong and spelling it with an I-E. You can also text my name, Eddie, with a Y, to 500. 500. I'll say it one more time. You dumb, dumb idiot baby. That's audible.com slash Eddie with a Y or text Eddie with a Y to 500 500. And while you're there, I recommend Slaughterhouse 5 by Kurt Vonnegut. It was a great experience and I think everyone should listen to Slaughterhouse 5. So go pick up that audiobook and uh, thanks for watching the video. I'm sorry it was so uh, depressing. So um, click off the video now. Bye. Click off the video. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Click off the video. Do it. Click off the video before I cut to the music. Thank you, Carrie, L, Justin, DWL, Sammy, Derek, Laura, Sarah, Kelly, Colleen, Sloan, Bernard, Rosalie, Mel, Olivia, Damien, Nick, Gabrielle, Matthew, The Hanging Judge, Dom, Kenzie, Mallory, Jackie, Kimmy, Aurora, Ezra, James, Diana, Cybercase, Brandon, Alex, Taper Tamer, Megan, Player N, Brand the Raisins, Reese, Amanda, Nichiban, Car Wreck, Haley, Elizabeth, Peter, Malin, Chelsea, Josie, Michael, Tyler, Dave and Janet, Marin, Jeremy, Cody. Thank you guys so much.